Hello, my name is Ilak here. I would like to talk today about the 20 points rule in beach handball with the data that we analyzed from the European Beach Handball Championship that took place in Varna, Bulgaria. First of all, defense offense. I would like to introduce me a bit, like this, you know from where I'm coming. Uh, I was, I'm coming from Barcelona, from Spain. I played in the Spanish national team and here, as you can see, I won the Spanish championship together with all my, my teammates in 2017 in Zagreb. And since uh, two years ago, I changed my role to be second coach of the German national uh, beach handball team, more specialized in analysis of the opponent and uh, defense system. But one of the current questions that I always had in, 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 my, in my past as a, as a player and also now right now as a coach is how can I be a better defender, beach handball player? How, what I can, I can analyze to get the real data and, and to really uh, understanding and knowledge of the opponent. Exists a, a red line or red limit that when we arrive and we reach this light and this limit um, we know certainly that we could win the game or that we know that we don't have any chance that and the important point from Michael Jordan here the offense win games but the defense win championship and beat humble so I will try together with you to really understand and to really put a bit of light to all these three questions analyzing the different uh, data and the different um, results that we got from the European Championship in Barna. First of, first of all, uh, here we want to understand and we want to define if it's possible and whatever the data it's possible to extract that information. If we identify a pattern when we get a certain number of points on the scoreboard and the scoreboard, if we can win, we can lose. Also, verify if a certain number of goals is scored by the offense will provide us always a higher percentage of victory. In, the other, in other words, if we get less than X uh, points, we have a chance to win, we don't have a chance to win. So this kind of, of two main questions is what I would like to resolve with you. Of, of course, here we are searching for a real application. What means a real application? That we are trying to um, get that information, get every information, every data that we have available. Can we try to analyze this data and help us to make a new tactics? Can you try to understand this data and adapt it to our training system? And can we prepare our national teams and can we prepare our trainings based just in data? These are the things that, that we are trying to do. So how we make the methodology? Um, the, the event was taking place in, in Barna, as I said, in Bulgaria, 13th and 18th of July. In that case, we are analyzing just men's, but in the conclusions, I will tell you a bit more about the women's championship. Games. We analyze 81 games, 162 sets of the tournament. The sources. The sources are being analyzed, made it by myself, after analyzing the 81 games. Uh, with a program that is called XPS, uh, Sideline Sports. Everyone can find that. It's really well known in the in the Hummel wall. Um, also with the scrapping done from the EHF, from the match reports, and the play by plays provided as well from the European Federation. Data to analyze. So we extract all these from these 81 games, from one of these 162 sets, the run, the opponent, the offense defense from the first set, the offense defense from the second set, and in case that it was a shootout, offense defense as well, and together they gave us a number, the average in offense of the total of the game of that team, and the average in defense, the total of the game of that team. Let's put an example here. These are the, the champions, the Danish national team, where we can really see here the round, here in the, in the first column, the opponent that they had, the offense, defense of the first sets, offense, defense of the second sets, shootouts, and the average. Here we see that the average in offense is 21.5, in offense being over the average of the competition, and the average of, different, uh, of defense around 15.1. 
after we will analyze a bit more in details what means this 51 and this 21.5. Let's talk about all the information that we took from this data, EHF, um, video analysis, match reports, we put it in a result. This is the distribution of the team's scores averages. Obviously, we are, we are splitting between defense and offense. As you can see here, first of all, in the column in the middle, this is the final ranking of the, of the, of the tournament of the European Championship in Barna. Here we see that the best defense is Denmark with 15.1. We can find it here. And on top of that is the second best offense with 21.9. Um, does not that Croatia, a bit more high, um, we found it that this is the best offense, almost with 24 points per average. This is really a lot. Um, but in this case, it's not really good in offense. It's the 12th best defense, in, sorry, not good in defense. It's the 12th best defense with 21.5. Here we have, as you can see, that the highest, this is a coincidence maybe, but we know that the, that the highest ranking teams, like could be the one, two, third, fourth, five position, we are always close to that ranking. But we have one interesting out, out leader here, an outsider, that is the anger in the ninth position. Uh, as the game statistics are really comparable to a semi-finalist team, but they did not actually manage to go any further. And they finished, as we can see here, in the ninth position. Except for that, outsider, all the other teams, they are quite on the same um, argument, or following the same argument that we just said. Let's see right now one of the, I will say, the most important uh, graph that we extract from this data. So let's be more, more in detail about, this is a average of teams, let's see a average of scores that we can really see deeply. This is the... Uh, distribution of the teams for scores based on losers and winners. On the middle, in this dark blue, we can see always the global distribution of the scores. Above the global distribution of the scores, we see the losers distribution, the teams of the losing teams, the, the distribution of the losing teams. And after here, uh, below, we see the winners team. So what we see here, first of all, we see that we have one result, and this was kind of uh, also outsider, to comment that, that a game between Ukraine and uh, Ukraine and Hungary, they lost uh, uh, with two points, and the others they won with uh, 10 or 15. So we know that, <laughs> that you can lose also with two points. Also... 11 points. The first victory was Portu Portugal against Poland, 11-10. But this is where it comes the most important and where it comes the title of this presentation. The 20-point mark. The 20-point mark is surprised when the 30-point mark. When we pass the 20-point mark, we really see that the loser's scores decrease significantly clearly establishing there the 20 point marks that the, when we when you cross when you open cross the 20 point uh, 20 points mark the probabilities and changes of winning increase nevertheless we did not have any resistor of defeat with 21 points but we can see really a clear trending and once you pass 20 everything decreases well, even, even though that you can get 28 uh, versus 29, this was uh, Turkey, Germany, uh, that we won for one point uh, in a golden goal. So that means that even though you have a situation and outsiders, then even more than 20 points, you have also chances to lose. Let's talk about a bit more of the results. This is the consolidation of the likelihood. What means this? This is the changes, the chances that one event repeats on the tournament. Meaning that uh, on that table we can see, first of all, a general comments. If a team scores more than 20 points and concedes fewer than 20, 
that is important, if the team concedes more than 20, but concedes fewer than 20, the probability of winning increases to 50%. On top of that, in 84% of the games, 84% of the games, the winner defense does not get more than 20 points scored against them. What means that? Here, we can establish, and this could be a yes, that in 84% of the games, the likelihood to win is really high if they don't cro if they uh, if they don't cross the line of the 20 points. Third, as just I clarified, 16% are the unlucky losers that even scoring more than 20, but they're still losing the game. Of course, we need to take in consideration the outsiders, uh, like Hungary, like made a really good tournament but was not possible to go further into the classification, into the final ranking. These are general comments, but let's talk about a bit more on offense. And we are here on that point. Probably to score more than 20 points is 66%. The probably, probability to score more than, six, than 20 points is 66%. In reality, less than 24% of the winner offense score less than 20 points. In defense, the probability for the other teams to score 20 points or less, again, you is 34%. But the reality is 84% of the winner's defense concede 20 or less points. Just 16% of the winner's defense concede 20 points. Taking all of this data that maybe is a bit too um, difficult to understand for you directly and in this short time, um, we need to take all that information really make it in a real application and to make a really conclusions of that. We need to understand that um, how the data, we need to take the data as a basis to analyze any team. Not just to, to talk about uh, this is X percent percentage or the 20 points or the 20 point rule or, or what is my team efficiency. We need to take really to in consideration to prepare a national team, not just in trainings, also in the same championship. Why? Croatia versus Denmark. The offense win games, but defense win championships? Well, on that case, the Croatian team with the really experienced people and with the really uh, speed on the, on the offense versus the Danish national team of the combination with a very powerful and well-performed defense um, after analyze all the data, we saw that the combination between defense from Denmark plus the structure in attack, in offense from uh, Denmark, they make them win the championship. Even though, even though, not Croatia, being the best offense with 24.9% average points per game, that this is really, really high, is the 12th position in defense. So they allow us to go the, def the, the offense outperform all the other national teams and that is the difference between how is so difficult to win Croatia how is so difficult to win another team because the, dif the efficient efficiency and the speed they are that they, they are making really difficult to defeat them but well let's talk a bit more about this is going to happen always. I don't think so, uh, because this is important that we can really analyze the future. We can really understand uh, the others, that uh, the other events, the other European championships that are coming. But also, we need to understand about the women's beach handball. Um, we made the same analysis for that, but we didn't have time enough to make a presentation for that as well. Uh, but we see that the training is is um, a bit lower that means that the point of 20 points rules in beach handball men's in women is 18 points rule because they are playing not as fast as the men's and because normally the scores are lower so this it will be something that we will need to track as well in the future as we said uh, does exist a rule of 20 points yes and no the germans they say nine uh, no but we need to really understand that this data, this 20 points, is a really big benchmark in the last European Championship, yes. We need to prepare our, our defense to be able to adjust 
to the different teams when it goes about Croatia, when it talks about Portugal, about Germany, about Spain. But it's important that we just not analyze a team based on our feelings and our video, also with the clear data. The future, this is the key. Uh, the future of, of this rule, um, it will be always marked from the rules, from the new referees. Uh, we start to see in, in few European Championships and in few Spanish Championships as well as the last EVT that was taking place in Torrox in Malaga that we see that the game is going to be faster than what is right now that the referees they want that the, that the offense is fast so that will provoke more goals that will provoke more chances for the offense to score a, a goal or two points or one point goals and that will make this 20-point rule elevate, increase to another level, as well for the women, as well for the men. Um, even though this, I guess that this, it will need to be tracked in the future, and it will be, uh, it, it needs to be also followed in the next competitions, like the next EBT finals or the next World Championship. It will be very interesting to apply that data to the World Championship as well as in two years in the next European Championship. Thank you so much for your time. I see you in the courts, on the Beach Humble courts. Um, I just let you hear two links. These are the two links that I created for you. You can check it out. Is uh, in the uh, in the, the first is the Manalcinet dashboard. Is a Google Data Studio dashboard that I created. You can just take a look on there. All the data that I, I use it is there. And after you can take the data consolidation. Is all the data that I use to make this graph, to make this presentation is there. It's free. You can just take it a look on that. And please, if you have a comment or you would like to take it in contact, here you are. Okay? Thank you so much and take care.